people who don't understand uh, the Hebrew and how that verse has been interpreted by the Jewish tradition since the very beginning uh, read it and think that therefore uh, if you take someone's life you, you, your own life is forfeit. Well, if you, I mean, at the simplest level, if you looked at it that, that way, that would mean if you were driving and you ran a stop sign and uh, accidentally killed somebody that you'd lose your life. Well, that doesn't make any sense at all. And nor does an eye and eye for a tooth for a tooth. Perhaps the most famous formulation in Jewish tradition for, the, for the, how we understand that came from Tevye in Fiddler on the Roof whose famous line is, if everyone lived by an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, the world would all be blind and toothless. So that was never the intention of the verse. And in fact, the Talmud in Tractate Baba Kama, which is one of the three tractates that deal with uh, rules of law of the 63, goes on for pages and pages to explain what the verse really means. And the short answer is, they say, quote, this means monetary compensation for an eye. You interpret it to mean money for an eye. You pluck out somebody's eye, whether by accident or on purpose, and you've got to pay damages, just like our civil court system provides. Uh, same with if you kill somebody wrongfully. There's a civil remedy. Um, so in these pages and pages, what they go through is, tons of reconciliation of this verse with other verses in the, in the Hebrew Bible and with their understanding. For example, they say, um, if it meant an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, if it had to be equal, well, what if one person, you take out somebody's eye who has small eyes, but you have large eyes? Well, if you take out your large eye, it's not exactly equal. And in another place, it says equal justice for all. So how could that be? Uh, another place talks, another argument that's put forth is, well, um, if you take out somebody's eye and your eye is to be taken out in return, what happens if you develop an infection and you die? Well, then the penalty was much greater than an eye for an eye, and you specifically are prohibited from greater penalties. And I don't want to go into all the technicalities of the legal arguments that are set forth in the Talmud. Suffice it to say that there are no less than a dozen. Uh, to re and the reason that such a strong case is made in the Talmud is to make it absolutely clear that no group of Jews ever, since Moses, has interpreted the, the Hebrew Bible to mean that you exact corp uh, punishment on the body uh, in line with the kind of injury that was caused, but that this verse always has meant from the very beginning, nothing more than what our American civil court system provides. If you injure somebody, you pay damages. And in fact, it even goes on to say how you calculate the damages. You know, that you compensate them for lost wages, you have to compensate them for pain and suffering, and all this kind of stuff. Um, so anybody who thinks that this verse means that you kill somebody, you should forfeit your life, is simply, um, doesn't understand the verse in the context in which it was understood all throughout the Jewish tradition.